Hi and uh, welcome to FNS BUP. Um, on today's video um, we're going to take a look at more pot hangers. Uh, you can see we've moved the tripod over the fire pit. I'll just show you that. A little bit drier today so we can uh, Perhaps do things a little bit uh, better than we did the other day. A little bit cramped under the shelter. It's not too bad for close-ups, but under these circumstances it gets a bit much. Alright. So that's basically what your tripod would look like Oop, over your fire. Try and get rid of some of that glare. There you go, that's better. Now we'll come in and uh, have a look at the pot hanger. Now using this this part, we should be able to use that a different way around. So if we take the pot off and the pot hanger that we made, if we take a look at that, you kind of get the general idea. So stop knot, push, cut to create that notch. Some of them call that a bail notch. Um, then you've got your Y branch that you cut off and you cut just above and just below. There we go. Right, so using that in a different way. So we can go the other way around and use it that way. But we need, instead of using the loop that we've got there and this tripod, we're going to show different ways that you can make pot hangers. And we'll be back shortly. just basically a bit of rhododendron um, that we cut down because obviously we're in the garden I'm struggling for things to use <clears throat> but that'll hang on a cross beam over the fire like that but I need to be able to use a thicker main branch to be able to do the type of cut in it that I need it's a little bit wet but we should be okay with that um, so What I'm going to try and do is we do something called a cross cut. So you're going diagonally across. Okay. And then we turn the wood around and we're going to go diagonally across the cut you've just done. Going the other way. Come up here and do a stop cut. Okay, so cross like that. And I've not gone all the way through, probably a bit deep on that one. I'll give this a try. <clears throat> okay, so what we're looking to do is a push cut, and we're looking to clear out this section here. We're looking to clear out this section and this section. Okay, so all it then leaves is that. Point. Oh, kind of knack of that. Ah, oh dear. Oh. 
does happen. <laughs> I was hoping it wouldn't. Nah, I've knackered it. Put the knife in, I've recut down and then push away from where you've done that. You put your knife in where you've cut with the, with the saw and you push away and that just pops it off and uh, stops you uh, splitting it off like I did before but you can just come back a little bit, move up, do another cross just clean it up a little bit ok so you can now sort of see what I've done Okay, so <clears throat> you can now kind of see what kind of effect I've, I've gone for, what I'm looking for with this um, is to be able to get a nice sort of backward slanting point on there like that. So you can see how it comes down in a V but then it also is set back underneath. Okay. And may I just say, I've been doing this for four years, and yeah, even I get injuries. It's easy done. Saw so caught me. Silky gone, boy. Really sharp. Always, always be very careful when using sharps. Even I've cut myself. So, <coughs> that basically turned the other way around. So, for example, the one we did yesterday um, was hung like that. Yeah? and the bail arm of the pot was there in the Y and this bit was on the string okay so it's a variation on that, we've inverted it that way around and we've put a point here instead of a flat cut stop so basically what it is, is this is basics and then this is sort of more skilled because of the X and getting it pointed and then getting it to go backwards on itself okay so that when we've got it that way around, we can put it on the end of a stick on that point, like that, and your pot then hangs in the Y. Okay? So that's the inverted version of, of that. We've just done that with it and just changed that cut a bit. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll probably set that up and we'll build maybe a frame over the fire to show you how that can sit on there, and we'll also show how we do a single pole hang, which this is primarily going to be used for. Okay, so using it this way around on a single pole will be the next bit. See you shortly. Right guys, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to flatten two edges off on this pole, the axe. Um, this is going to be part of another pot hanger, um, where you get a long pole, um, roughly around the same thickness, probably a bit thicker. Um, and you're going to want to either put a point on it or flatten two edges off, and you're going to drive it into the ground next to your fire. And on this end, we'll show you what to do in a little bit. Um, how to, what to cut and how to hang the pot but first I'm just going to get this cut
There we go. So that's now all finished. Um, Our dog Leo, Collie Cross Lab. He's a rescue dog. He's been in and out of kennels for four years. Uh, very scared of sneezes, the Hoover, loud bangs. Bonfire night was an absolute nightmare for him. Um, but he's decided to come out and have a play. As you can see, good boy. He can do a few tricks. He's good. That's his favourite ball. Anybody hides his favourite ball, he has a tantrum. Good boy! <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to cut now back to uh, what we do on the other end of the pole uh, for the pot hanger. Sorry for this uh, distraction, but uh, that's what happens in our house. Distractions all the time, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> Full of distractions, yeah. Full of distractions here. I'm amazed we get anything done. <laughs> okay, so when we next come back on, we'll be showing you what's going to be going on on the other end of that pole we've just done the two flats on and the reason why we've not gone to an absolute point all the way around and we've done flat let me just show that how that's flat you see how it comes to a point on both sides and it's flat opposite each other and instead of coming down to it's a point like a on wedge. the top and on the bottom it's a wedge what happens the reason why we've done a wedge is because we find that with it being wedge shaped it stays in the ground and holds the weight of the pot more so you've got more earth against the larger surface area sorry my bad camera work you basically got a larger surface area with it being flat to hold against the soil when it's in the ground so when it's in a point it can come out of the ground easier so if you flatten it off two flat sides to a point like that it stays in the ground better mm -hmm. okay so we'll be back shortly Right, I'll explain what it is Matthew's doing while he's doing it. Um, not too steep with your angle with the pole, Matt, or it'll snap. Um, that's it. What Matt's trying to do there is he's trying to do one flat side on the opposite end to where you put your point. So one flat side so it comes nice and flat at the top end. And we'll kind of show you. You try and bring that flat that you're cutting right across to the opposite edge of the pole. Okay, it doesn't really matter, it's more the point tip end that matters the most for this. Okay? My axe does need a charm, it's not been charm for a yeah, while. Yeah, I don't like the grind on your axe. Yeah, it's a bit more rounder than yours. Right, okay. So, what we can now do is we'll stick it in the ground and we'll then uh, show you how we hang the pot because we have to make a little dimple on that flat tip that Matthew's created. Um, so we'll no 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 that's fine that's fine should be able to hang off that it's just the tip end that matters yeah right so we're back in a second where we're we going to stick it so you can now see what we've done is we've put the pole into the ground so it hangs over the fire pit okay now in this in this end what you're going to do is you're going to get your pot hanger and pop that on the end like that. And see where that point comes to then take it off mark it with the uh, knife and you're going to use a drop point knife which is that so it comes to a lovely point and you just go round in circles with your knife just a little bit we're not looking to go all the way through okay and just scoop it around just so that you make a bit of a dimple in the end of that pole okay Oops. You do that without stabbing yourself would help. Don't have any trips to A&E, do we? No. Okay, so it doesn't have to be anything fantastic. We're not looking to drill a hole all the way through. It's just so basically when that tip hangs on the end of there, it's a bit more secure. I could have done, come forward a bit more, but 
just so that the tip of this is a bit more secure on that uh, stick. Let's make this angle a bit more aggressive in this. And you can tweak about things once you've, you know, you've got the general gist of how things look. You've got things more or less right. You can just have a, a bit of a tweak with things. Okay. That just makes that point just hang a little bit better on there. All right. It's just a case of tweak and play around with it a little bit. Just neaten it up a little bit just to to suit what you've done. There you go. So that sits better like that, yeah. And when you've got the weight on it, it then pulls that point down into that dimple, drives it home, and then it makes that more secure on the top of there. So we'll just pop the. Obviously, it hangs in the fire more. You can raise it up a bit higher. It just kind of shows you. It gives you the example. Obviously, that's right in the fire pit. We didn't have a pole long enough really to kind of get it higher, but we could make it a bit higher up. But that just kind of gives you a general idea of how that hangs on there and a different version of a type of pot hanger that you can use. Okay. In the next one, we're going to do a little bit of lashing with three poles again to make a frame and a horizontal bar over a fire and then we can use one of these again but the other way around so again I'm going to flip the same idea so same idea three different ways so that, that Y hangs on the horizontal bar and that then becomes your bail arm hang like that okay so there's different ways you can use these Fantastic, multi-purpose. So once you've kind of cut one, you're kind of good to go with different variations. So in a minute we'll cut back with the horizontal bar across the fire pit. We'll show you the lashing, then we'll probably drive it in the ground and then show you how it hangs. I'm going to start square lashing now. Um, I'm just a little bit of a practice because I'm a bit rusty, so uh, bear with me if I get something wrong or whatever. But start by doing this so that's your two loops and one overlap in the other and pop it on the end of your pole if Matthew's done that right he pulls that tight you should get that cross effect like that perfect so we're going to want to go over and under Like so, under, then over, which goes nice and square. Then lock the uh, poles. That's it. Pull the knots nice and tight together. Bring them in. Just keep things nice and neat as we're going along. So he's gone over and under, over and under, over and under, like we've done in a previous video. You'll find that in the playlist. Um, got lashings with poles. You want to go around do this three times at least, pulling things tight as you go. Got numb hands. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gone cold now. We are losing light as well. I'm going to go around one more time. That's it. Right, now you want to be going around the middle and doing what we've called frapping, which then basically pulls all of these bits in nice and tight. Okay, so it gets rid of all the slack that might be left in that lash. It's going to go around, around that middle section there. So instead of over and under, over and under, you go around the middle. That's it, and then pull tight. When you've gone round once, give it a good pull tight. That's it. Now it pulls all that in 
makes the, uh, the job even tighter. That's it. Thing is though, working with cold numb hands out here in the garden would be exactly the same as if we were actually out in the woods. You'd probably have cold hands out in the woods. This is one of those things that you've got to try and overcome while you're out and about and you're doing things. Okay, so Matthew's gone now over and under. And he's crossed back on himself to create that crisscross effect. You see that cross is left there. Okay, and what he's going to do now is he's going to get his tag end and pass it underneath both of those cross pieces. My camera work is terrible. Matt's just readjusted me. <laughs> Matt's better with a camera than I am. Just come away a bit, Dad. Okay. Come on in. That's it. You see that? Perfect. So you pass the tag end underneath the cross he's just made, pulling through all the slack till it gets close and tight up to the job. He's going to pull it all nice and close. Then he's going to tighten that down. And that'll bind then as a finishing knot to finish off the lash. Perfect. That'll do. Okay. So there is one square lash. Okay. Perfectly done. I'd give that a nine and a half out of ten, because there's always room for improvement. Yeah. <laughs> we never get ten out of ten. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do, we've done this on one end, which is this end. And we're now going to move across the horizontal pole, then over to this end. And he's going to do exactly the same at this end in a second. We'll be back in a sec. Hold on. Look at that. Oh wow. You can see the craters. That would be awesome. Are you recording that? Yeah. This is video, this isn't even a picture. Look at the craters, Dad. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? This is just from a 250 quid's worth of uh, camera camcorder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's by Panasonic. It's a good, it's a good one. Okay, so. For quickness, do you want me to do it? Yeah, sure. Right. So I'm going to start exactly the same way as Matthew did before. Making the two loops. Okay, so I'll do that a bit slow. So, like that. Like that. And you put this one on top of that, and then you pop it on the end of your pole. Bring it close, and tighten it up. And you end up with the cross that Matt ended up with. That's called a clove hitch. Okay. Right, so then we the pole so it's right next to where we've started. Okay. And I'm gonna go like Matt did over the top and underneath. Okay. And I'm gonna go underneath and over the top. Underneath and over the top. Pull on that, just get everything nice and tight. Underneath, and over the top. Underneath, and over the top. Okay. Go one more. So now I'm going to come round and go round the middle and do my frap. See that all pull in then, yeah? Okay. 
down nice and tight on that. I'll come round to this side and that'll finish off. So after you've frapped round, come round to this side. I tend to pinch it over the top with my thumb, then everything I've just done doesn't come undone. Okay. So you go over the top and underneath, and you're looking to go back round again, over the top and underneath. So then you're left with that cross, like that. See that crisscross? Yeah? Uh, you get your tag end, and you put it underneath, <laughs> with one hand. So you pinch it, when you've done it you leave it loose, so you've then got room to pass that underneath with one hand, pull through all your slack, and as you come to tighten everything up, move it closer to the job that you've just done, to the lash, and then just push it all closer. On that and there you go you're done okay so that's my version which it looks exactly the same as Matt's did okay all nice and tight sorry about the light the light is really cack the yeah it's uh, sun setting over there right so we're now going to quickly go over to the fire pit Bash this into the ground, so hammer this in, so it sits over the fire pit, and then we'll show you the uh, the pot hang. This is basically what you see on a lot of films, a lot of cowboy films, what you'll see on a lot of bushcraft channels. It's just a quite simple horizontal pole pot hang. So we'll be back in a sec over there. Okay, guys, we've now made all three. And I'm just going to uh, explain each one, which ones. I would recommend is the best one that for you to use or that's easier to use um, and which one is probably I'd say which one's hardest or more complicated now if we come and look at this one this is very simplistic so if you don't want a lot of work to do or you haven't got enough time to make the others then this is very very easy all you need is either a large knife that you can bat on or a small hand axe um, and this was the first one that we did, isn't it? This is it? the yeah. first one, yeah, and you, you cut a slanted edge on one side. And then... Pointed end on the other end. You point the other end and make sure they're in line. And drive it um, in. And then you find a, uh, a Y branch, something probably a bit thicker than this, maybe. A bit pot. longer, maybe. Yeah. A bit longer. Um, I don't know if you can see that now, because it's too dark, but... Yeah, that's that uh, pointed end that we did. Spin it to the side so they can see the point. Ah, see, that's better. You can yeah. carve a point out like that. I kind of knackered it up in the, the beginning with a stop cut. You don't do a stop cut, you just do a cross cut. And, and we cut off the top to top, top three triangles. We showed you how to do that earlier in the video. Yeah, which I kind of cocked up with a stop cut. So you just um, leave the stop cut out because that was unnecessary. So then... Okay. Pointed end goes on the top. I can see that where we made the dimple. And then your pot then goes on the Y. Um, the, but the great thing about this one is you don't need any cordage. It's simply just to get your tool and some carving and your pot and that's it and you're done. And drive it into the ground, make sure it's, it can hold the weight of your pot with the water in it because you don't want your, your pot falling in the fire and then extinguishing your fire. If you're in a survival situation you, you're going to want something that's more reliable I would say. Um, which we can then go onto the tripod, which is behind the camera right now. So if you want to turn around and show the tripod. Um, now the tripod, I'd say is probably one of the more reliable um, pot hangers because there's no chance of it falling over, there's no chance of you knocking it over. Um, and depending on how thick the logs you get, it can hold a lot of weight. You can see <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. So very, very reliable. Um, and with this one, it's a little bit more complicated. You're going to need to know how to square lash, um, lash the poles together. So you're lashing three, three par uh, parallel poles together. 
Um, and you're going to need to know, you know... Which again we've done in a playlist. You're going to need to know your knots and you're going to need to know simple stop cuts or notches. Um, and again, just a small, in our case, in this case, is a small, just for example, uh, Y branch. Um, but say if you've got bigger parts or whatever, um, get a bigger one or a smaller one, depending on your situation that you're in. And you just hang that under the stop cut, like that. And grab your pot. And that is not going anywhere. So with the tripod, you've got no chance of extinguishing your fire, which is brilliant. Um, definitely something to rely on while you're out, and not that hard to make. I would say it'd probably take you 15 minutes, 20 minutes to make, and that's all. So, very, very simple. Even though it's more complicated than that one, I do like this one. Yeah, so, it's one of my go-to favourites. This is what we started using anyway. Yeah. We, we just went straight to doing tripods when we yeah. first, first started bushcrafting. So. Much easier. Right, and then we move over to the um, the horizontal one that we've just done. Now so, this one is probably the most iconic uh, pot hanger. Um, you'll see it in a lot of Wild Western movies, um, a lot of cowboy films, things like that. Um, and again, you go on a bigger Y branch this time, um, but with this one, it works the opposite way. So instead of your pot hanging off there, you turn it around and your pot hangs off that notch there, and that sits on there. Let's see how that works. It was in reverse. Just move it away from the, the other pot hanger. That's it, that's better, that's better. You can come in. That's it, perfect. And the great thing about these is, again, like the tripod, very, very sturdy, depending on how, you know, we've not knocked this It'll hold far, a lot of weight, won't when it? When you're out in the wild and you yeah. you get thicker branches and you knock it in properly. Um, Basically, again, hang off it, the, the whole point and premise behind this style, why cowboys used this one, and I'll just kind of explain it briefly, is basically because you've got the horizontal pole that means you can then put multiple pots on over the fire depending on how big you've made your fire if you make a rectangle fire instead of a round one so you make a long fire you can then hang multiple pots on this cross bar and that's the whole point behind why cowboys used this horizontal bar just basically for multiple pots, so you got a pot of beans on one side cooking there, you want that to kind of cook slowly, and then you've got say, a pot hanging in the middle closer to the fire full of water, mm -hmm. yeah, and then a pot of something like, I don't know, porridge or whatever, and like I said before, keeping warm to the other side. Like I said before, if, you know, if you've been on a long hike all day, um, trying to find to trying to get to location and you build one of these you can, like we have done ourselves is you can hang socks over it yes to dry your, um, dry your socks out on the ends you can yeah. even tie your laces on your off your use your laces to tie your boots and hang your boots off it to dry your boots out over the fire to one side yeah you can um, yeah. hang clothes uh, dry anything. things off so if you had a wet day again that's a perfect one for drying off and all in, your items and in the morning depends on Obviously with this it's adjustable, so you can under your lash in, leave the poles in and lower the lower the pole to whatever height you want it to, depending on the fire. Mm -hmm. So if it's too high or it's too low, then you can then adjust it. Or you can just go and find longer Y branches to hang your pots closer. If it's for pots, you just find longer Y branches, just cut a new one that's longer, put another notch on, put your, cock, your pot closer to the fire. But for drying your items out, yeah, you can just undo the lash, lower it down, same on that end, lower it down, jobs are good. But yeah, so here, that's basically three, three really useful pot hangers. So you've got the pole driven at the ground with a flat end, you've got the tripod, which we like to use, that's a really good go-to one to use, really sturdy, really stable. And then you've then got the horizontal bar, which then means you can dry clothes out and put multiple pots over a fire. So, yeah, awesome.
freezing. <laughs> it is quite so guys, uh, quite nippy. After after all that, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Um, very simple to make. Very easy skills to learn. Won't take you very long. Um, all you need is some time. And right now, everybody's got a lot of time to do many things. So. I, I would recommend reading a book or learning how to lash, do things like this, keep your brain occupied, keep you healthy, keep you focused. Thank, thank you very much for watching. Um, the Patreon link is in the description uh, if you want to go pop over to our page, Patreon and become a member. Um, uh, we also have links to our social media, I think we can put them in the description as well. Um, and if you like our content, please go to our playlists or watch our other videos. But most importantly, please, please, if you do yeah. click onto this video, even if you're just watching two or three minutes of it, don't forget to go over and hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like. It lets us lets us know how you find our content. And yeah. if you're liking the content, we can continue doing the same. If not, we can then perhaps switch up, do something a bit different. But yeah, think about subscribing. We do do all sorts on here. It's not just knots and lashings. We're just going through a knots and lashings phase, aren't we, at the moment? Just yeah, to kind of explain yeah. and link a few things through from basics to more complicated. And this is where we're at the moment, so the more complicated stuff. And until we get out in the bush, we cut out in the woods rather, yeah. we, we, we can't really do anything like shelters, raised beds, no. chairs, anything like that. And we're not allowed to stay overnight anywhere. Yeah. Not at the moment, no. Don't forget though, guys, to share, like and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, if you're liking the content, great. Okay, so thank you very much uh, from FNSBUP. See you later. Thanks very much, guys. See you next time.